All right, so now that we're done with kind of some basic groundwork on apparent, observation, observer, what frame you're in, now let's get some, to some of the consequences of the geometry of special relativity. Um, in this case, let's start off with, in a laboratory experiment, a muon is observed to travel at travel 800 meters before disintegrating. A graduate student looks up the lifetime of a muon, 2 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds, and calculates that or concludes that the speed is V is 800 divided by this half-life, which is equal to 4 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Um, however, this is faster than the speed of light. Identify the student's error and find the actual speed of the muon. Okay, so what we know is that time dilation is a consequence of the geometry. And what this tells us is that running clocks move slow. Okay, we saw that with the time interval question earlier. Now we see it again. And in fact, they run slow by the factor known as the Lorentz factor, which is this gamma. So gamma is uh, 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. We've seen that c squared a ton lately, haven't we? Uh, and again, the bar is the time that we see of the object moving and close to the speed of light. And so, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and see what else is there for us. Um, here, the student has not taken into account the time dilation of the muon's, quote, internal clock in the laboratory. So the muon lasts t equal gamma tau. So that's the Lorentz factor on the time dilation part. And clearly we know what gamma is from the no page. So tau is the proper quote unquote time two times 10 to the negative six seconds. Proper meaning, proper meaning being in the frame of reference of the moving object. So here, V is actually equal to D over the dilated time, which is gamma tau. So if we plug everything in, we see that we have tau over the square root. But since we have a denominator inside the denominator, or a denominator, excuse me, since we have a fraction in the denominator, we know that we can multiply by the reciprocal and we get D over tau times the square root of one minus V squared over C squared. And now we have to play a bunch of algebra. So let's uh, get that tau d over to the left-hand side and take the square of both sides. So we're now on a second line. Square of both sides, we get rid of that square root. Now we can push everything over, isolate one. So push this v squared c squared over. And um, now we can factor out the v squared. Uh, reason why we want to do all this mumbo jumbo here is because we're trying to get the V by itself to see what the actual speed is. And the steps we do next will make sure that it is a uh, factor of something times the speed of light. So here we solve for V squared by dividing the bracket over. And then we force factor out this 1 over C squared term by putting a C squared in the numerator here of the tau term. Uh, this allows us to multiply this over to the v squared side. So we have everything over here. And we do this because now we can write v squared over c squared as one big fraction, which we do down here. But we know that that's equal to the bracket term and the denominator, so we plug that through. And you see, uh, we plug in all the values for tau c d in the next step. And then we run it through. Uh, again, use Mathematica or something to the like with all the powers here. We get approximately three fourths. And then that goes as you see here. So let it simplify down. By combining the V and C into a big square, what we see is that this fraction reduces to a perfect square itself, which is 16 over 25, or 4 squared, 5 squared. And that can be written as a perfect square. So what this implies is that V over C is equal to four over fit or four over five. 
So we can write V as a uh, fraction of C. So V equals 4 fifths C. And we see that uh, all the algebra there, you could probably do it a simpler way. I don't know. Um, but here we get to the point we want and we show that not only is V less than the speed of light, but it's actually a fairly large part of the speed of light, which makes sense with the um, half-life like that or lifetime of 10 to the negative 6. So fair play.